Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to video number three in our IC7100 from A to Z series. Last time we went through some useful operations and functions just to get you started on FM and repeaters and how to set some of that up. This time we're going to start going through the manual in a little bit more organized manner and we're going to take a look at the basic menu functions and operations for the radio. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the basic operating functions for the 7100. The first thing is you will notice that there are five touchscreen buttons across the bottom and you'll see a little M3 up here above this right now and this is controlled by the menu button here on the upper left and there are actually three menus and when you press the menu button it cycles through all three menus so that gives you effectively a total of 15 functions that you can access on the touchscreen and they have it divided up into three basically because we've got such a small area here you've got to combine some different functions in order to get everything to fit. So M1, actually these stay the same regardless of what mode you're in. And actually I think I'm in DV mode because I was playing with that earlier. So if I'm in digital voice mode, FM mode, if I go to sideband, um, any mode, ready, these stay the same. So we have let me go to something quiet. We have scan, split, AB, VM, and MW. So scan is the scan functions. We're not going to go through those tonight. Split is for split mode operation. So that makes your receive frequency your current VFO. And actually, let's go into VFO mode. So I'm going to skip over here to V slash M. And we covered this last time, but if you press that, it goes between VFO and memory mode. So, uh, and, and you can also, as we covered last time, touch over here on the channel number and the memo VFO indicator on the display. Either one of those will go between the two. So let's go to VFO mode. So split makes the VFO A your receive frequency and B, your transmit frequency. Now this is separate from the duplex function for FM and repeaters. So this would normally be something you'd do on sideband, but it actually works regardless of what mode you're in. So if I do split, you'll see it says split up here in the upper right, and my receive frequency now is VFOA, which is what I was on, and my transmit frequency is 14.1 megahertz upper sideband, which is what my VFOB was. Probably would not be doing this sort of a split under normal circumstances, but it goes between the two no matter what mode or band they're on. Now if I turn split off, if I were to switch A and B, which is the AB button, now that puts my receive frequency as VFOB, and if I do split, now my transmit frequency is what's in VFOA. So split works either way and your receive frequency is whatever one you happen to be on. Now let's go back to VFOA. Momentarily touching A and B switches you back and forth if you just tap it. If you press and hold the AB button you get a double beep and then what that does is it sets VFOB to be equal to what's in VFOA. So now VFOB is my 2 meter frequency that I had in here. And likewise, if I was on VFOB at the time, it would set VFOA equal to what was in VFOB. We covered VM and then MW is memory write and we covered that in the last episode. So that's memory one. Let's go to memory two. Now, in memory two, we have duplex, and that is the FM duplex function. Although, again, the duplex mode also works in any mode. So you can have duplex plus and minus in sideband. So, for example, if I switch to single sideband, again, 
this would not be a very likely scenario, but I could receive on 145.47 upper sideband and transmit, and then with duplex on, I would be transmitting on 144.870. So if I touch duplex again, it now went to plus, which means I'm transmitting above my receive frequency, and if I touch it again, it goes off. So that's simplex. So, of course, duplex off would be your normal operating mode for sideband, CW, and so forth. Duplex is actually the only menu item on menu 2 that stays the same regardless of mode. So let me go back to FM for a moment. In FM, I have tone and voice. So tone is the tone squelch, and up here you'll see tone squelch is on. We did set this when we were setting this up in the last episode, so I'm not going to go through all of the different tone squelch options. You can go look at the last episode for that. And then the third item is voice, and you see the fourth two are blank when we're in FM. So voice is the transmit voice memories, and again, I'm not going to go through those in detail today. Now you notice when I touched voice I got this submenu and I got the same thing with tone. Some of the buttons go to sub menus or sub functions when you touch them. To get back to the main menu just tap the menu button and in this case that takes you to the next set of sub buttons. Tap it again. So if you keep repeatedly tapping the menu button it'll always bring you back to these M1, M2, M3 menus. So let's just take a look at menu 2 in the other modes here. If I'm in sideband, then I get the uh, COMP, which is your voice compression. That turns the compression on and off. If you touch and hold it, it set, takes you to the compression level settings. And again, I can touch menu here to take me back out of that. And then TBW is transmit bandwidth. And it briefly changes here to show you that I'm in transmit bandwidth wide. If I touch and hold this, it changes it to mid. If I touch and hold it again, it changes it to narrow, and then back to wide. So this controls your transmit bandwidth in sideband. And then there's some other menu settings to go through the details of that. Again, we're not going to cover those today. So now, let's go to menu 3. Oh, hang on. Let me go back to menu 2. We still have a couple more modes here. If I go to CW, then in menu 2, I have AGC. Oh, and I apologize. That should have been there on sideband as well. Yeah, AGC becomes the second one on sideband and CW and RIDI. So let me back up and go over AGC. And touching AGC takes you between medium slow and fast AGC. So that's your automatic gain control speed and you can see that right up here on the display below the frequency. In CW mode my middle button now becomes the keyer function. So this is keyer memories very similar to the voice memories and then if I let's see well I'm sorry, I don't want to go through all the details of this. When we cover Keyer and CW, we'll go through the rest of these. And if I press the menu, this gives me more Keyer functions to set, send, and edit um, some of those memories. And then the third press brings me back to the main menu. And then the other function you get in CW is one quarter, which is sets the dial to one quarter tuning speed. So if I go to one quarter, you see the little one quarter, and then this becomes a little bit slower in terms of how it tunes. So that's menu two in CW. Now let's go to RIDI, and in RIDI I still have AGC in the second position, but now the third position gives me decode. The 7100 will actually decode RIDI signals and it'll display it on the screen. And then I have the RIDI button and that goes through details for RIDI. And again I have the one quarter speed just like I did in CW to make the dial tuning a little finer. And again I'm not going to go through the details of the RIDI functions today.
And let me just double check. Yeah, AM, I believe, is going to be the same, AGC and voice. And then FM, we already saw we had tone and voice. And then digital voice. Then I get digital squelch and some other functions here specific to D-Star. Again, we're not going to cover these in this episode. So we'll go back to FM now. Now let's go to menu 3. So menu 3, I have memo, which is memory functions. That stays the same. Scope stays the same. And SWR stays the same no matter what mode I'm in. These last two buttons change, again, depending on mode. So in FM, this is DTMF or touch tones, dual tone multi-frequency. And that takes you to the touch tone menu, and you can program DTMF sequences to have the radio just automatically send. And then Vox... In the vo and Vox will be the same in any of the voice modes. So in FM, sideband, and AM, I have Vox over here. And that's for voice-operated transmit. You can turn it on and turn it off, and you can press and hold it to go through the settings. Again, not going to cover those today. So let's go to CW. If I'm in CW, the last button changes to break-in, which controls my break-in operation. So I have break-in, full break-in, and no break-in. And this, the funny noise that you may or may not have heard is what happens when a repeater is keying up and you're in CW. And then in RIDI, there's nothing for these last two functions, so this, these three stay the same. And in digital voice, I get um, DTMF and Vox, just like I do in the other voice, in, in FM and the other voice functions. So, that's the three menus and the things that stay the same. Now, we're going to take a quick look at the VFOs and the band stacking registers. So, I already covered in the VFOs, and let me get back to menu one here. We already covered VFO A and B and setting the two equal to each other. There's one other thing that you get with the VFO mode, and that is what's called band stacking registers. The 7100 has three band stacking registers per band. So on each band, the radio will actually remember three, I'll call them mini memories, per band that you don't have to do anything to set. They're just built in. And the way you access them is if you go to the band, you touch the megahertz to change bands. I'm on FM on 2 meters right now. If I touch 144 again, you'll notice it changed frequencies. And so let's just do something here. We're going to change to CW. And I'm going to go down to the, we'll go down to the CW part of the band here. And, of course, I probably should have tuned at a larger tuning step, but um, here, let's do that. So I'm going to just go down here somewhere in the CW range, or the, sorry, the sideband range. And now if I touch the megahertz and touch 144 again, it'll go to the third band stacking register, which is a different frequency yet again. So let's put that one on CW. And let me go down to the CW part of the band. Whoops. Let me go out of the band. Um, so down in the CW portion of the band. So now every time I go through this, if I go a third time, this will go to the third, which was where we started. So here's 145.47. So this is my FM and repeater. If I touch it again hit 144. This is upper side band where I was for my second band stacking register. And I remembered the frequency, the mode, and everything else. And then if I touch it a third time, I'm in the CW portion of the band and it remembers the frequency that I was there. Now there is no indication on the display that tells you which register, you know, there's not like a little R1, 2, or 3 somewhere that tells you 
which register you're in. So the only way you can really tell is you just have to keep cycling through them. But it's kind of handy for every particular band. You might keep, for example, on two meters, I might keep a two meter uh, FM repeater register that I use all the time. I might keep a sideband register that I use all the time, and I might keep a CW one. And then you can do the same thing for any of the bands. So if I, just very quickly here, let's go to 20 meters, and it's on 14100, and let's let's say I have a net that I work every day up here at 14325 upper sideband. And then if I do 14 again, now it went back to the previous register. And let's say I work some, I like to work, uh, well, let's say I work um, CW down in the lower part of the band. And then let's say on, uh, four, on 20 meters, I also like to work uh, uh, RIDI. Uh, let's see, somewhere that's up around... 14085. So those are the three things that I like to do on 20 meters. So again, I've got my net up on the upper sideband here. I've got my CW in the lower portion. And then I've got RIDI at 14085. So every band has those three band stacking registers. And they make great little sort of I'll call them quickie memories that you really don't have to think about. You just keep going to the band multiple times and it'll remember those for you. And that's it for the basics for today. Well, there's a start on the basics. We're going to continue on with some more basic operations next time. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, I'd appreciate a click on that like button. If you're finding the whole channel useful, please consider subscribing with the subscribe button. You can also click on the little bell icon after you subscribe if you want to be notified when new videos are available. I'm always happy to see comments and questions and suggestions or anything else that you might like to leave. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.